What's up folks? Today I'm going to be reviewing the game Spare Time Bowling. This version of the game came out in 1977 from Lakeside Games and it is for however many people want to play. Now the original version of this game came out in 1940 and basically uh, the object of this game is you're going to be trying to score the most amount of points and you're going to be simulating a bowling game using these dice. You're going to be rolling for strikes and spares and basically just trying to knock down as many pins as you can. So without further ado, let's show you this game, Spare Time Bowling. Okay, everybody, let's just show you the components really quick. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is this really cool component. Uh, this is a bowling pin, and the dice are actually in this thing. You just simply open it up, and uh, you have this. And this also doubles as a, a little cup you can get in the dice, which is rather cool. Um, you'll have ten dice, um, and the dice basically have five sides that have nothing on them, and then one with a pin. Now, there's one die that has a circle on it, um, as well as a pin, and this is basically means it's a split. And I'll talk about how that works here in just a bit. Anyway, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be rolling these dice and you're going to be trying to roll uh, blank spaces. Uh, these represent down pins. If you end up rolling and all of them are blank spaces, you're going to roll a strike and then you will just label that on the bowling sheet. So let's just say I roll. And uh, right here I have two pins and these are stood pins. So I'm going to set those aside and I'm going to go ahead and write the number 8 right here on the bowling sheet. And then I'm going to have one more roll to try to knock them down. So what I'll do is I'll set them aside and this will be my second roll for the frame. I'll roll and in this case I knocked over one more pin and I have one pin standing. So I'll have an 8 here and a 1 here for a total of 9. Now if I had ended up knocking down all of the pins on my second roll, that would count as a spare. And then I would just simply uh, write a spare in there. Now when it comes to the split, let's just say I roll something like this on my first roll. And uh, I have uh, this showing. Uh, this is going to count as a stood pin, but I'm going to have to re-roll this again. And uh, if I end up rolling this on the second roll, it's basically going to count as a pin standing. Um, so I'll have that and that. So it does kind of uh, decrease the odds a little bit that I'll actually be able to get a spare. The only other time this is not going to count as a pin standing is if you uh, actually rolled something like this on your on a roll. And if you ended up rolling like all nine of these uh, blanks and then this would not count as a pin standing. This would count like that. Um, so, that so that's basically how it works. And then on the next turn you'll roll. Uh, I uh, got eight pins again, so I'll put those to the side, and I'll re-roll them again, and again, I did not get anything, so I'll mark that on the score. Uh, now, basically, if you've never scored for bowling, here's a real quick way how it works. If you end up rolling a strike on the first frame, you'll put an X over there, and then the next two balls that you roll are going to count towards this. So, uh, strike counts as ten points, and let's say I roll the six and a three here. Um, that would be the next two balls, so you would write 19 here because 10 plus 6 and 3 is 19. If it turns out I got a spare on the second frame here, um, that it would count as 10 points, so this would be a uh, 10, and then the spare would also count as 10, so that would be 20. If it turned out you got like a strike, strike, and a 3, you would add 13 points to this strike, which would make it 23 points. So 10 plus another 10 plus 3. Uh, etc. Now a spare will basically count as uh, uh, adding an extra roll. So if you had a, a spare here and say you had a 2, um, this would be 12 over here, um, etc. Now on the 10th frame is a little different. Um, if you end up rolling a strike here, you'll get two more shots. If you end up getting a spare, you'll get an extra ball. And if you end up getting like an open frame, say a six or a three, that will basically end the frame. And so then what you'll do is you'll just simply score all this up, and whoever has the highest amount of points at the end is going to win the game. And that, folks, is Spare Time Bowling. So my final thoughts on Spare Time Bowling. Well, uh, as far as a bowling game with dice, this is not too bad. Um, it's pretty basic. Obviously, there really is no strategy. You're just going to be rolling dice and just trying to uh, score as many uh, down pins as you can. Um, this does not have really any press your luck aspects to it. Um, and uh, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't make a gutter ball symbol on any of these dice. But fortunately, you know, you can just tape a symbol on the dice or whatever. You can uh, just tape whatever you want to try to uh, make the game a little bit more uh, interesting as far as that goes. But this is the type of game, if you're just looking to kill some time and you don't want to have to read through a whole bunch of rules, you know, it's not a bad time killer. It's actually uh, okay, I think. 
Uh, now, I have seen some other bowling dice games out there, and I actually have one that's a more recent copy, um, and it has the strikes and the spare symbols on it, and so it plays differently than this. It's not very easy to roll strikes in this game, uh, that's for sure. You Basically, you have to roll ten dice and have nothing show up on them, so it's not easy to get strikes in this game. Um, so... Uh, I ended up finding this game at a thrift store for 99 cents, and the box is pretty beat up. It has a lot of tape on it. I'm thinking this game's probably been sitting in the attic for probably about 40 years or so. Um, but it came with everything, and I really like the dice holder. That's pretty cool, making a bowling pin into a dice cup holder. So that's a pretty cool little component. But anyway, um, this, again, is just a game just to waste time with, really. It's nothing too special about it. But if you do like bowling in general, maybe you might want to pick this up and give it a try, you know, and even if you don't like bowling and you're just looking to kill some time, it's not a bad way to do it. So folks, that is my review of Spare Time Bowling. I hope you all have a great day and keep on gaming.